Karibu sana bwana George. Asante sana. Bina wale. Been a while. All right. Just next to him, we have the man on, of the moment. At the moment, I'm quite sure a number of uh, private security guards are watching this to ensure that uh, he speaks for them. And he, exactly, he does that. He's the National General Secretary for the Kenya National Private Security Workers Union. Karibu sana bwana Isaac, Dr. Isaac Andabwa. Thank you. Just next to him, we have one of the players in the security sector. Uh, we have Diego Ngogi Wilson, who is the managing director for County Guards Limited. Diego, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe let me begin with you, Bonasek Jen. We are looking at um, the reforms in this sector. Talking about, I remember in one of the protests or, or demonstrations, you said we, we've been uh, we've been quiet for so long paying somebody 7,000, paying somebody 10,000, it makes a lot of sense. And now, taking that figure to 30,000 shillings. And let me quote somebody, um, the, the, the Kotu Secretary General, Francis Atuolis, more or less is saying that the 30,000 is not quite tenable. Are we reading from two different scripts? Yeah, I want to just comment uh, first uh, on the issues of uh, uh, 30,000. Eh? Mm -hmm. We are not, not talking about the 30,000 the private security industry alone. Mm -hmm. You know, we have had uh, agitation in terms of a uh, reform agenda. Mm -hmm. So reform uh, touches on, on a number of things. Mm -hmm. But now uh, the regulator has just begun with the 30,000. Mm -hmm. Before you come up with that figure, you need to look into a various uh, issues like indices, like life, uh, the cost of living in Nairobi. And remember, we are talking about Nairobi County, where life is very much expensive. And you know, we have been, uh, culturally or traditionally, we have been uh, relying on the Ministry of Labor, on the, what you are talking about, the minimum wage, which does not anger well with the cards. For example, the, 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 the rents, you know, they are paid 15% uh, 15, 15 of the minimum wage, which is like uh, 1,500. And it doesn't make a sense when you go to the ground. Like, for example, a uh, uh, Mabati house in Kibera, Kangwari, it goes up, uh, up to Kenya shilling 6,000. So what we are saying, the life in Nairobi, we don't have a minimum uh, facilities. We don't have minimum facilities in Nairobi, like school, like a hospital, and any other maybe transport uh, system whereby they are categorized mm -hmm. that are minimum wage uh, people, uh, earners, they must go this line. So, you know, in Nairobi, we live all of us. We buy a shop in the same, same malls, we go to the same, same hospital, and other services we do just like uh, people of Nairobi. Mm -hmm. So, I think the life, when people talk about uh, the cost of living has gone too high for them, mm -hmm. it is it's worse when it comes to the private security. Because in terms of the same, same concern that people are talking about, the, the, the cost of living has gone high. I want to also tell you something, people are having a fear that uh, the 3,000 cannot be tenable. Mm -hmm. I want to assure you it is tenable. Because uh, I've done a lot of CBS mm -hmm. with employers. Even now, as I was leaving to this uh, uh, show, uh, I consulted the Fasul Mohammed. Mm -hmm. The employer association, including him, mm -hmm. they are saying that they don't have any problem in terms of paying that uh, 10,000. Mm -hmm. But the problem is the government to stick to the enforcement. Mm -hmm. The government should not speak in two uh, uh, languages. Like you have just mentioned something. Mm -hmm. You know, people have to accept that traditionally we have been attached to the Ministry of Labor. But since now we have the new act, for the private security sector. Mm -hmm. Now we need to play our role independently from the Ministry uh, of Labor in terms of the, the regulations because the regulations gives uh, the CEO uh, section nine, uh, section nine of the regulations. It gives the CEO mandate of the regulating the sector. And when you want, you want to regulate, he first has to regulate the client who consumes our services. Number two, he regulates the, the employee and then lastly, uh, the employer. So. You cannot do uh, an, one item at expense or of the, of the other. Mm -hmm. So the, 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 the consumers of our service, they must now realize that the t life has gone high, things are, are changing, and the life is becoming very <coughs> difficult for the private security industry. So we must, again, be compensated in terms mm -hmm. of our, our work. You know, there is no employee in the, in the Republic of Kenya who, who remains on assignment mm -hmm. for more than 12 hours. Mm -hmm. you know? As a single shift. So, in terms of the, our working hours, in terms of our allowances, overtime, and so forth, 
you know, you, if you do proper calculation, even if it were me. Did you agree with the private security firms on this figure? You know, you, you know that is a government mm. uh, giving 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 uh, the, the, the 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 gazette member. Mm. But, but obviously, should have involved the private security mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Obviously, obviously, mm. we have had a lot of uh, consultation and discussions all over. Mm. We have been always uh, at the Kenya School of Management, Management consulting over oh, the same same thing. Mm -hmm. And you can, if you can, if somebody can table the, the whatever the, the Fazula has said and the, what has been there in, in practice for, from the Ministry of Labour, you will find the difference. No, it's, it's not a big thing. It's around 2,000 or less than 2,000. Mm -hmm. So there is nothing strange there. Mm -hmm. But what we have agreed, in Nairobi, a card, a card serving in Nairobi, and a card serving in Kamega or Kisum, those are two different uh, people, and the demands are different. So what we are saying, in, in Nairobi, let's have an entry of 3,000. Mm -hmm. Yes, an entry of 3,000. But for me, mm. I could have even proposed even more than that because <laughs> where I used to work, where I used to, to work at the, the U.S. Embassy, uh -huh. I have a CBA, a very nice CBA with the cards, and they are being paid more than around 4,000. But you, know? you cannot compare Kenya and the United States, and you know very well that some of these companies, they draw their salary from the exchequer. <laughs> In Kenya, the private security firms do not draw uh, their, their, their money from the, from the exchequer or from treasury. As My well. brother, what we, you, you need to look at the act, eh? Mm -hmm. the, 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 the act is putting the private security to the national security uh, structures. Mm -hmm. You need to look at that structure. All right. that, that's what is there. Okay. Therefore, mm -hmm. therefore, you need to look at, at, again, the welfare of that person. We don't just employ somebody on the contract simply because it is not tenable, maybe because it's high. You need to look at the input. Mm -hmm. Maybe if I can just close that uh, uh, sentiment, mm -hmm. let's look at the role. What is the role of the private security in the Republic of Kenya? The role of private security of science in the Republic of Kenya is to complement mm. the national security agents. And I want to tell you today, the, the, the 80% of the information of the or intelligence of the private security is actually gotten or obtained from the private security. You know? So we need to take, whether it's private or public, security is paramount. You know? Okay. All right, let's hear from the private guards. So maybe the private sector will say something different. Diego, the, um, he's talked about, indeed, uh, the, that was just uh, the minimum wage that they want, for, especially for guards working here in Nairobi. You own a company that you supply guards to individuals and even companies and corporates. Is the 30,000 shillings tenable? Uh, thank you again, uh, Ben. And um, well, as I agree with my friend Isaac on a number of things, including mm -hmm. the, the life has really become expensive. Mm -hmm. The 30,000 is not timely. It's not actually smart. Uh, in terms of the timings, in terms of uh, the, the, you know, the economy of Kenya is still bleeding. And um, as you asked him, none of us was really consultant on the issue of the 30,000. Mm. Uh, a constable today in Kenya police service earns much less than 30,000 much less than 30,000. This is a person that is em employed by the government, hands from the government, mm -hmm. carries a gun, mm -hmm. and uh, still is earning less than 30,000. And uh, I, I will surprise you, Ben, that um, the 30,000 we are talking about here is not actually the 30,000, mm -hmm. because we are supposed to pay NSSA for that guard. Mm -hmm. So we will have to increase 6% of 30,000, mm -hmm. then we will have to pay the housing levy for that guard, so you'll have to top up again 1.5% of 30,000. Then the same guard consumes much of uh, resources from the company. Mm -hmm. One, we will have to make sure that in Ghana before it gets to work is fully uniformed. Mm. My friend here, Isaac, because he's in the in industry, will tell you that for Langand to get into his working place, only clothing takes about 12,000. We must, by, by the law, we must ensure that in guard. So we must take WIBA insurance for the guard. We must have a contractual liability insurance for our clients where we have taken the guns. Mm -hmm. Some clients actually have even asking for fidelity. Mm -hmm. And you will find putting all these expenses together, <coughs> including the expenses of supervision, there is a guard out there called a felony supervisor. He knows about it. Mm. That guard we are not paid by anyone. The company uses the money for the guard that now is, is, is having a contract somewhere mm -hmm. to pay. The same guard pays for the fuel. 
the same grant pays for cars, insurances, motorbike insurances, uh, and even the offices, because you cannot run an organization without an office. Mm -hmm. So I don't think really mm -hmm. these expenses were put into consideration mm -hmm. before coming up with the 30,000 for the grant. I agree we need to pay our security guns well. Mm -hmm. Th that is one area that uh, both of us, we agree. Mm -hmm. But how well do we start? Because even in government, when they are doing the, the agreements with the maybe doctors, teachers, and all that, they usually have a percentage of increase. Two ones, that is 30,000. Where can we start? Mm -hmm. Can we say we start from 20? After two years, we go to 22. From there, we go to 25. From there, we go to this. Mm -hmm. And then the same thing is supposed to be demographic and segmented mm -hmm. in a way that Angand here in Nairobi, as mm -hmm. he says, the cost mm -hmm. of Nairobi is too high, including the rental expenses. Mm -hmm. But uh, the, the same cost, if you go to Busia, you will find maybe rent is much lesser than, mm. than Nairobi. Yeah. So the, the, again, we should have been consulted and again come up with a formula that having this formula towards 30,000, this region, we can start with this much. This region, we can start in this much. And it, it's all over. Even in marketing, we have something called the price discrimination. Mm. You will find a broom band in Lovington, 1 kg cost in different from what, the same kg <laughs> in Daraka where I was born. <laughs> and it's the same Rubad. Uh -huh. It's price and discrimination based uh -huh. on the consumer. Yes. Yeah, because there is a move that we may, might take and we kill the industry. Thinking mm -hmm. that we are helping the industry, we kill it. We cannot have a supermarket that has an annual turnover of one million. They need a grant. That supermarket is in Busia. You are telling me that supermarket to pay me 40,000 so that I can pay the Ngandi there 28,000. Because mm. according to the to Nini, the Busia should mm. under around 28,000 per Ngand. Mm. So the Nini and in the day and then probably two Ngands at the night, that supermarket will either <coughs> close or they will work without Ngand. Mm. Where are we taking this country mm. in terms of security? Because mm. security Ngands are, are the, the first line uh, security for the nation. Uh, sorry, I'm, I'm sure I'm not taking a lot of time. In Galisa, in Galisa University, the first people that died when it was attacked, they were security in guns. In Dusitia, the mm. first people that died were security in guns. Mm. Now, we are, we, are, we are losing our own employees in circumstances that the government itself should look at this industry as very important mm. and empower the industry, not to fight the industry, empower the industry. And I'm happy <coughs> the way we started, uh, actually, the ideologies of uh, our boys and the PSLA, Fazul, they are not banned, mm. but they need more consultation mm -hmm. and they come up with the concrete agreements. Very well, let me hear, let, let me hear from uh, George, uh, who is a security analyst, because one thing, other than what we're talking about, the 30,000, which you, you very well, we can see, we, we, we cannot find a middle ground. We are also ha talking about reforms in the sector, but unfortunately the, the figures, the 30,000 shillings is more or less what is taking up all the conversation around security firms. I would like you to touch on that, because guards will now have their official numbers, badge numbers, just like uh, our cops do have. And um, of course, the, the laws have already been gazetted, so it's only the implementation phase, and we know the country. Kenya, we have very good policies and laws, but when it comes to the implementation phase, we always try to, we always seem to be getting into a crossfire. <coughs> yes, but we are just looking at this one aspect of the whole thing. We are looking at the salary, forgetting that this is a whole industry that has different dynamics. Mm. And if I try and look at what is happening right now, I'll draw an analogy mm. of a ship captain. Yeah, the ship has already left the dock. Mm. And so many things are happening. Along the way, he realizes there's a problem that needs to be fixed in the ship. We have the sailors who are used to living in a certain way, kind of life. Mm. Yeah, we have the pilot who has been steering this ship for all these years, mm -hmm. using certain gadgets. And here is a new captain who says, no, we need to put things to order. Trying to build the ship as it is sailing. At the same time, we have other people who are trying to sabotage the whole thing. And this is exactly what we're facing here. All of us need to sit on a table and agree on the way forward. The act is good. It's noble, wanting to regulate an industry that was unregulated before. Mm -hmm. This led to the sprouting out of small companies 
Every other place you go, you'll find somebody who wakes up in the morning, he decides now the kind of business I'll do, I'll open a security company. When I open a security company, we look at the pricing. You decide, as he has said, price discrimination. You decide, you say, this is what, how I'll price my services, and out of these services, I'm going to pay the guard this much, no standard payment. Mm -hmm. And this is exactly what is ailing the industry. When it comes to issues of uh, welfare mm -hmm. of the guards, mm -hmm. you will find it doesn't exist in most of these organizations. Mm -hmm. Guards wake up in the morning, the owners of the company don't care how this person gets to work, this person gets sick, the owner of the company doesn't care. Mm. Bottom line for him is the P&L, profit and loss. Yes. So basically, this was an unregulated industry. So the noble idea of coming up with this association, I mean this authority, must be impressed by all. But in doing this, we must look at the dynamics of doing business uh, 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 as a security company, mm -hmm. because this is a commercial enterprise. It's not a government enterprise. Mm -hmm. So your existence depends on what the clients will pay and how you will juggle this know that I'll have to pay NHIF, I'll have to pay NSSF, I'll have to pay the housing levy, and at the end of the day, because this is a, an investment for me, there's something I'm getting from it. Mm -hmm. So when we look at uh, all the players that are coming on board, we have the employers, we have the union, we have the authority, and then we have the client. Unless we have a central point, a central meeting point, then basically this is not going to work. Just like the ship that mm. I've talked about, everybody is pulling in different directions. Mm. So we all need to pull to one di towards one direction and agree what is implementable. And I've said we need to relook at that act because I believe this act was, 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 uh, was picked from somewhere, mm. brought to Kenya, and then without involving the stakeholders, we've started, we've decided to implement. And it's similar to the current quagmire that we are facing with the current constitution yeah. because most of it was borrowed and I believe also this act most of it yeah. was borrowed from elsewhere and why are we talking about this because the security industry in Kenya is dynamic private security industry why is it dynamic because there was a gap if you look at the ratio of policemen to the civilians mm. or to members of the public we have not met the UN ratio and that is why now we have to bring in private people to supplement the government. Mm. But when we are doing this supplementation, how are we going to coordinate between the national security and the private security? Mm. And one of the aspects that is really being talked about is mm. the salary. And yes. the salary is not only affecting the guiding sector. The doctors right now are on the streets. Mm. Yeah? Here we have the Daktari championing for the rights of his people, which is doing correctly. Mm. And, 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 and if you look very closely, we have this other aspect, which people are not looking at, the cost of doing business in Kenya. Mm. What, and actually what, on the what, same. What are the yeah. consequences? Because yeah. already investors are complaining. Mm -hmm. It's too expensive to do business in Kenya. Mm -hmm. Apart from electricity, which you're already complaining about, other things that are coming up, the taxes. Mm -hmm. And now we bring in another aspect <coughs> of security which is supposed to be a national government preserve. Mm. So we need to look at all this and then reach a central point and agree this is the way forward. Otherwise, we are going to sink the ship. Still on the reforms, Chris. Yes, please. Um, mm -hmm. I'm looking at uh, the, the whole conversation has been centered on the welfare. Yes. But still on that act talks about harmonization of um, the training that yes. uh, the guards right. undergo. I'd like you to touch on that. Good. First of all, allow me to review a few things. Mm. First and foremost, look at regulation. How does regulation, for example, these of Kenya insurance, these of Kenya architects, how do they regulate themselves? The first thing they look at is the product or the service that they're taking into the market. Is my product or the service that I'm taking into the market worth the price that I want to give that? Mm -hmm. So my thought is here, what we would have done, which is also very noble, like my brother said, and two brothers have said, right? is that we needed, first of all, to develop the baseline of our services, mm -hmm. after which then we take it to the market, mm -hmm. price it, review performance. If the performance is very good, then go and tell our consumers, guy consumers, you're consuming a service that quality has changed. So what do we do? We want to reprise this because what we are bringing you for your consumption is of a much, much higher quality than what you used to consume before. Outside of that, I want to say affirmatively, mm -hmm. there is no one in the industry mm -hmm. who is not pro-regulation. To include myself, 
We want to be pro we want to be regulated because of where we have come from and the welfare, the kind of welfare that our, our guards are facing out there. They are under some conditions that are not very conducive. Mm -hmm. But then, like my brother said, there are industry players, consumers of this service, who have much more financial muscle. Who much more, they, they're from an economy where they appreciate security to a much higher standard than ourselves. Mm -hmm. If, for example, you look at the security index of Kenya and Israel, just a, just a preview of that, sneak mm -hmm. peek preview of that. Mm -hmm. You would say security is a pri priority in Israel, mm -hmm. whereas in Kenya, it could be rated somewhere middle level or something like that. Let's come to the welfare <laughs> of our guards. Mm -hmm. If you look at the industry turnover in this country of ours, <coughs> per month or, or an annual, talk about figures, we're talking about 8 billion. That's a big injection into the economy. Mm -hmm. And the payload that this industry is carrying is about 1.2 million employed by the, by, by the industry. So what are we saying? We are saying that regulation in this industry is a must. It is important. It is a VVVIP item, which we, we, we must adhere to. Mm -hmm. Then we must carry it along step by step to ensure that all of us get to Canaan. We are saying we want 100% transition of every player in this industry to that land where we're able to speak one language as a community. Yeah. 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 I do not want anybody to see any of a, a security person in this country going to the streets like our doctors are doing. No, no, security is different. And how do we do that? There must be a mechanism that we need to follow holistically. Mm -hmm. That we are saying everybody's aboard this ship, and this ship, no matter what turbulent it faces in the seas, we can be able to circumvent that as a group and not as individuals, and then labeling others as no, no, we don't want to do that. Or we want to. Let's go back to, 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 to the general secretary, <coughs> Doctor. I'm looking at um, COVID during COVID-19. Diego here will bear me witness that a number of guards had to be laid off, just like in any, all other sectors. Yeah. Talking about the welfare of the guards, and uh, maybe from 10,000 now to 30,000, don't you think some of your members are going to lose some of, the, some of their earnings because of this? Uh, you know, my brother, there is no business person mm -hmm. who will agree that uh, uh, we have an issue of a job loss. Eh? Every employer takes that as an excuse. Mm -hmm. But I want to come back to the issue uh, we are trying to discuss. Uh, my friends are just looking for a scapegoat. Eh? Mm -hmm. This act, we need to know when was it actually ascended into being officially an act. It's not yesterday mm -hmm. or, the, or the year before the year of uh, 2022. It came into being during uh, Uru's uh, leadership. Mm -hmm. That's 2016. Now from 2016, we have had, the government has had a lot of uh, participation meetings. <coughs> I have personally have attended three at, at the Kenya School of Government. But I want to pick on what, what my brother said. You know, people who like doing th business in darkness, they will not, never accept the light because they know the light will expose them. If you look at the, what I wanted us to discuss, 30,000 in terms of Nairobi, that is the issue. <coughs> it should not be about tenable by, 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 because if they don't have money, they don't have their own money. And I want to, uh, to remind my brother, he doesn't own the money, or he doesn't even own the cards. Mm -hmm. he, we are in the service industry, you know? The people who sustain him and the cards is the client. So if they talk about all-inclusive kind of uh, discussion and consultation, I agree. And I've told the CEO, we need to have that forum, whereby the client should be told, the private security is not like public security. And I want to correct him. The private security is a bit expensive. Globally, if you compare with the, the public. Two weeks ago, I met uh, David Marshall, the KK uh, uh, managing director. He was here in the country. He wanted uh, to get a license to export labor, you know, to Iraq. And when I moved closer and I found, I wanted to know the, the, the payment, he talked about 150,000 Kenyan shillings in Iraq. Mm -hmm. I've also traveled to South Africa, all over the, the world. You know, the problem but, here. But a section, yes. if we look at, we, Without comparison, if we look at the real situation on yes. the ground, and in some countries the security sector is very, very robust. Yes. Now we are having reforms. The, yes. These are some of the reforms that some countries did a long time ago. Yes. So trying to compare here and some other countries, it some, sometimes leaves a bitter taste for, 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 for some of the I just want companies. to correct you. Yes. We learn from mistakes and we learn from others. Mm -hmm. And we must not live in denial. 
We must copy for, from what our neighbors are doing, which is good, for us again to go the same direction. But what I wanted to say, mm -hmm. let me leave about the Fazul issue, because I'm to, I'm, uh, they, they, are, they are made too much on, on, on the regulations. Eh? Mm -hmm. Let me go back to the CS of labor. Every labor day, first May, we have always been told about the general, general wages, uh, minimum wage. And in Kenya, we have uh, 2,500 investors in the private security industry. Mm -hmm. Now, I want us to really interrogate this 2,500. Mm -hmm. Leave alone the Fazul's uh, uh, commitment. Amongst the 2,500 who have, who have complied with the CS labor uh, general wages minimum wage, there are only foreign, foreign, foreign uh, investors who have complied. But the rest are either stealing from the government, uh, are either stealing from NHF and so forth, not remitting, and, and also stealing from the, 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 the employee. Mm. Because the, the current the basic is 15,000, 15, around the 900. Now, you can do your own survey. How many out of 2,500 that actually are lying to that uh, general which is nobody, about from the foreign? Now, you can look at the, even here, I've just walked here and I've talked to the guys outside there. The first uh, culprit of the, the, the industry is the government itself. Mm. Because you cannot give uh, people law that yourself you don't respect and comply. Mm. Go to the Ministry of Labor. A company that is, has been given a contract there does not meet the threshold of minimum wage. The mm. company that GBC has contracted here uh, in the name of Canon, I'll, I'll be frank, mm. it doesn't meet the threshold of it, even the payslip. Others, they don't give payslips. Mm. The Supreme Court, which is a face of the government, uh, justice, the government that is got money there does not comply with the minimum wage. And you know, people want to continue doing business in a colonial way. Mm -hmm. When they hear about uh, civilization in the industry, they become uh, 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 barriers. You know? So, government is also guilty as well. That's what they are saying. Mm -hmm. That's why Fazul has given every client the consumer of this service a notice that things are not going to go the normal way. We must be prepared to change. And we have said, even that thousand, I'm saying it because I'm been a guard. I've been there for the last uh, 10 or so years in US Embassy. And in fact, this reform agenda is, has been spearheading even before Fazulu came in, you know, because okay. I felt mm -hmm. there's a lot of disparity, you know. All right, all right. And, 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 and yes. Just a minute. Yeah. You can look at the Minister of Labor uh, in terms of compensation of somebody, uh, a, 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 a worker who has lost life. It is pathetic. They compensated by 12,000. 12, mm -hmm. the, the other day, you had the, the cars who were killed in, in Mumias. You know, uh, you can, the, the, the story is dead. You cannot understand. Those cats who left home going for a uh, bread to feed their family, they have lost their life. Now he's talking about them, nothing. We need to have what you call compensation when a guard dies on, on assignment. We need to have medical, mm -hmm. because these people are just human beings. So what you should be telling me and asking my brother, how relevant is that thousand in Nairobi, you know? Mm -hmm. if, if, if only, if, if the house, mm -hmm. the Mama, Mabati house, which is not two, uh, two, two rooms, huh? just one, 10 by 10. I've been there even yesterday. It goes for 6,000. Now from, from, from 30, what do you remain with? And you have school fees, you have medical. Even the ILO convention talks about uh, decent work, you know, you environment under which somebody uh, okay. works. Right. Now, you, you can have a lot of myriad of challenges mm -hmm. from the uniform, from overtime, it's nowhere. Mm -hmm. It's also mm -hmm. a grind the other day. Uh, Fazul was giving a circular for people to release the, uh, the what you call the certificate of the academics. Mm. When you are employed in a private security, you are, you are officially in detention of that trial. You cannot even proceed with the uh, studies because already the, your certificate has been configured officially and illegally by right. the employer. All right. There's something, you, else that, yeah. that is something that oh, we are going to be, look, be looking at and we wonder why do they have exactly to confiscate the documents of uh, yes. security. And this is something that has been happening for years. Yes. Diego, you have been told that uh, by your regulator that you have to comply. As private security companies, you have to comply. Yes. Now, what that means, if it were my business, of course I have to hike the, 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 the rates for my clients. So how are you managing this to ensure that uh, there is a balance between your client, you don't lose your client, and you also don't lose your guard? Before maybe it comes in, maybe I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You know, in, in labor, we work with what you call a, a tripartite arrangement. You know? When it goes, it goes to a, a document, a collective bargaining agreement, mm -hmm. we, have, we have agreed. We have agreed, and the most employers, are, Fazula has confirmed me, they are saying mm -hmm. they are willing to pay. But you know, the problem is the other counties. 
But here in Nairobi, most of employers have said mm -hmm. they are ready to pay to pay. But the challenge was mm -hmm. okay. He's one of the he's one of the private security he providers. He'll he tell us that whether he will <laughs> and he's ready because he is here. He can speak for himself. Diego, yeah, yeah. how are you adjusting to these regulations? Um, then I want to say that uh, what PSLI is doing is not a band. Um, they are doing many other good things, including the process of uh, certifying security firms. And of course, uh, they, they, they are trying to, they are quite doing a number of things. So, but uh, the, this issue, particular issue of the minimum wage, is the issue that requires more consultation going forward. Mm. And uh, you've asked me a very good question. And uh, I want to say again, Kenya is an open economy. Open economies, they leave forces of demand and supply to regulate the economy. You don't, you don't bulldoze things unless you are very sure or unless it's a, it's, it's a very high valuable commodity, like mm. the way the government is trying to regulate the, the, the oil industry. But in the labor industry, the, the law that we are supposed to abide in, and I'm happy that uh, my senior here has talked about it, is the labor laws. And the labor laws, they have already indicated how much you are supposed to pay, the minimum wage. And of course, it has also some parameters of paying overtime and all other issues. Mm -hmm. um, uh, ben, mm. in Nairobi, as much as he's saying, let's do something in Nairobi, in Nairobi we also have different consumers. Mm. For example, we have financial institutions. Yeah, say uh, na na National Bank of Kenya, KCB, mm. we have all those financial institutions. Mm -hmm. There shouldn't be a category within these uh, uh, salary, whatever, minimum wage. Mm -hmm. There shouldn't be a way of segmenting these clients. Banks, as he was saying, we can even put a minimum of 40. There is no problem. Those are financial institutions. But look at a supermarket in Gedorai. Mm -hmm. we, we should also <laughs> consider the yeah, other because side. They are quite that this person requires yeah. the same services. So yeah. we can do maybe... That's a good point. Yeah, we can do maybe uh, uh, 20. And that is where we, we really want to have a discussion on, mm. so that we may not think that because we're in Nairobi, everybody in Nairobi can mm. afford 30. And again, I said here before, mm. that this 30 is actually 40, based on other statutory deductions that we do from the employer side. Mm. It's not that. That is what goes to the, mm. to the employee. Yeah. And this employee has also has to part with, the, of course, PE mm -hmm. and, and, the, and the NHIF, mm -hmm. but there are, there are quite a number of uh, deductions where we are both contributing. So we go up once, and there are other expenses that I mentioned, I mentioned quite a number of them. So going forward, I think uh, our boss, Fazul, mm -hmm. uh, needs to call all the regulated, all the certified security firms. Mm -hmm. We have a sitting. And we tell him that this is not a bad idea, mm. but I think these are the steps that you can take mm. towards achieving this noble idea. Mm -hmm. All of us want our guns to earn good money. Then today, if I get a client that is giving me 50K, mm -hmm. I will pay my Gandhi 35. All of us, I, I mean, mm. these are human beings. Mm. These are our brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. We meet them, and they surely we do shopping in the same market. Mm -hmm. So we are not against the idea of Uganda earning good money. Mm -hmm. We are saying mm -hmm. we should have a, a, a well-balanced kind of uh, approach where every person is secured in Kenya, even a small business person, and the, the upper uh, guys who are doing higher businesses. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we see how yeah. we can come up. Uh, George, uh, um, uh, let me t take it from where he's left it. Very valid point. Talking about a bank and uh, maybe a supermarket in uh, one of the local areas here in the country, you will see that indeed they are quite different in terms of even how much money the private companies are, are given. How do we strike a middle point? I, I think this is a matter of, uh, is a subject of discussion between uh, the authority, the service providers, and the client. You need to strike a middle point because basically if we are talking so much about salaries, mm -hmm. we are forgetting that we have other welfare issues yes. that need to be looked into. Mm -hmm. And also these welfare issues also cost. There is a cost implication on that. And uh, from where I sit, we should categorize these clients and agree on what they need to pay. Yeah? You see right now, we don't have a standard price for guardian. I'll wake up today 
go register my security company, I decide on how much I'll pay the guard, and I'll also decide on how much I'm going to charge. So there's a lot of undercutting. And I'll give a very specific example. He knows, he knows. There was a point at around 1997, Securico was also almost closing shop in Kenya. Why? Price was. Because they insisted on paying what the Ministry of Labor has stipulated and what is in the law. And then other companies were coming in and cutting them on charges. Mm. So basically, they had to adjust to that. They had to look at the market and say, if this is what the market is taking and this is what the and market is offering, let us downgrade also mm -hmm. so that we can survive these turbulent waters. And that is what they did. Initially, they used to have permanent guards. They decided to come up with what they called standard guards. So a standard guard basically is a casual. Mm -hmm. And you know where they were deploying these guards? They were repackaged themselves. And they were not deploying these guards to Kawangwara or whatever. Prime clients, I won't mention them here, mm. were not willing to pay the amount that is required, the standard amount. Mm -hmm. So these guys had to repackage. And basically, this is exactly what we are facing in the industry right now. Mm -hmm. And that is why I said the authority should not only start looking at, focus on the salary, they should focus on now starting mm -hmm. from improving everything. Looking mm -hmm. at, 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 for example, the training, mm -hmm. repackaging and saying, mm -hmm. you are a bank, this guard is being trained on this, and basically what you need to pay for the guard is this. And then, once we have agreed from the client's level, the consumer level, now we come down to the employers. We've negotiated and these institutions are willing to pay this. But don't forget that this is commercial security. Mm -hmm. And who are our clients? Who are our customers? Mm -hmm. These are also commercial enterprises. Mm -hmm. And all of us are looking at the bottom, profits. Yes. I have a board, I have a budget, and what Dr. has said about the government, the government is operating within its budget. You draw a budget here and try to tell these people that we are going to pay 50,000 per guard, mm. they'll tell you, no, readjust austerity measures. Mm. So you go, the government will pay 14,000 per guard so that the owner of the company will decide on what to pay the guard. I think that mm. should be the start point. Mm. And then we move to other aspects. But mm. when we concentrate so much on saying we should pay, mm -hmm. the cost of doing business is going to be so high to some people mm -hmm. and this is why now we are seeing we have a risk yes. of people getting out people disinvesting in kenya mm. and even investors in the security industry pulling out mm. Mm. beefing what what yes. george has talked about and diego actually started with it talking about if we we're talking about thirty thousand and even a, um, an entry level a cop is not paid that amount maybe there should have been more consultation before even we get to the welfare of the guards before you get to the f figures themselves. Totally support that. And I, I really love what everybody said here, to include the kind of questions you're asking on this su subject matter. Mm -hmm. I think we're all equivocally saying one thing here, mm -hmm. clearly. Yes. That these changes should have been progressive. Not this one here, this one here, this mm -hmm. one. We be progressive. For example, take a look at the contracts that every security company has with a client. What are these contract stipulations? Do they fit? the working condition that we require for this particular guard. Mm -hmm. All right? Are there statutory and legal compliances that these contracts are missing? Are there? And if they are there, that becomes point number one for correction because we are saying this industry has a very huge payload and we don't want to offload any of this payload uh, along as we go. We want everybody to be a beneficiary of what we are saying. Then we are also saying another thing here, right? That security itself mm -hmm. is a very big enabler to business in this country. Yes. By creating insecurity, we come to what my brother said, the investing. People start going out of here. And if they start going out of there and there, we create insecurity in the country. And if we pile, uh, if we pile redundancy, redundancy on, on, on our own persons mm -hmm. to go into that market where everybody is, is playing insecurity, then we are saying here, from an econ economical perspective, then we are killing the business environment of Kenya. We see our president time and again flying out. What does our president go to do out there? To attract more investors. We need to support that presidential activity of going to bring business to Kenya by ourselves also. Having a progressive approach, looking at, for example, operational environment. My brother talked about Iraq and Kenya, 150,000 and things like that. No, that is a very harsh environment. There must be compensation for you working in a harsh environment. And that is what is equated to the amount of money he quoted. 
coming back to our country, we are basically saying, and I'm so happy he said itself, that the, 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 the government itself needs to look at itself inwardly and say, fine, uh, this item being pushed by a, 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 working, a, a working person in our own governance, is it going to be fruitful or do we need to rework on it so that we carry everybody along? And we are saying, we are saying, first of all, that that is the entry point of failure. Mm. And if that is the entry point of failure, mm. we will say, guys, how do we regulate ourselves if you yourself are failing? <coughs> how do we operate in that kind of environment? Yeah. On God's welfare, we are saying, yes, mm. we want God. We know some of our guards wake up very early in the morning. Mm -hmm just for them to be able to get a sip and uh, an affordable accommodation yes. and go work as far as five or six kilometers and they, they walk that's insecurity to themselves mm -hmm. we want them to get all these welfares accumulated in one package for them to be able to take care of all that and like he said security operates on this perspective pass over cost to client yes are the clients in that environment where they are able to afford all these welfare packages, these security persons? Mm. If that survey says no, then we sit back and look at what do we do now to progressively push this agenda to the point, to the end point where everybody gets the benefit of it. Mm. Diego, you wanted to add yes, something? Yes, yes, I want because to say something. Yeah? One thing I can comfortably say is that we are all on the welfare of, of our security guards because even in advertisements we see bike uh, the, uh, somebody riding a bicycle yes. a rungu you know yes. that is the narrative that is there we need to change that that is true ben and uh, I, I want to again say mm -hmm. we should not have a regulation that is bringing more insecurity mm -hmm. you know there is a way we might approach these things we create more insecurity mm -hmm. than it were and the government the way the procurement process does for these uh, changes to happen th some other things must happen because you see, there is a law in, in a procurement law, especially in government, that of course they will take the cheapest. When you meet all other criteria, mm -hmm. if it's now the pricing, they will take the cheapest. Then that law must be changed. I, I don't know from whether it's from parliament or from whichever quarters. Mm -hmm. They shouldn't be changed, and they say whatever is uh, cheapest, but with a minimum of 45 because if we are we are spending around yeah, we have brief case, 7, brief yes, yes, yes 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 okay. yes with a minimum of 45 or 50. Mm. that is where now we can now complain that uh, the canon here and I'm, I'm i'm fighting for my colleague who has the supplying security here or other firms in government uh, the the law courts and all those areas if you quote it for example thirteen thousand, and you are the cheapest how much can you pay and can't Looking at the expenses that I mentioned here earlier, mm. the maximum you can pay and is 9,000. That is the maximum mm -hmm. because of operating expenses. So you, mm. you'll say no. Yeah, because the company has agreed 13,000. Yes. <laughs> okay. And they went through the legal framework of procurement mm -hmm. and they got you. So the government should start. And I'm happy that the doctor here has clearly said that the government should start. Mm. Yeah, the, the, the 30,000 minimum, <laughs> yeah. the government yeah. should start. And also the government actually should be out there to help security firms. We are actually, as I said earlier, we are in the front line of this, securing mm. our country. I'm, I'm winding up. Mm. The government can even subsidize. Mm -hmm. Now that uh, we, are, we don't have many people that can afford this much, the government can give security firms uh, some money so that at least we can be restarted mm. because of these timelines it, within two months within three months i mean it's not possible mm. it's not logical uh, ben mm. and these are some of the things uh, the, the, some abnormalities you know you cannot have people getting maybe fifteen thousand as a minimum and then overnight you say that mm. there must be a process yeah and uh, i would like you to respond to that because at the end of the day if at all we are going to comply and make sure that uh, we follow the act as stipulated let's look at government installation you've given a very practical example of kbc you've given a practical example of the judiciary all these private security firms which were given the contract by the government are not observing the thirty thousand shillings yes my brother I want, I want to reiterate what you are saying yeah all these stories that you are hearing here from these employers, eh? mm -hmm. apart from what he said, that you know, the, the plane has taken off the ground and you cannot bend the law. You either fix yourself, align with that law, or you punch out. That's the issue. And uh, historically, uh, I'm talking about 60, 61 years, since this country attained independence, eh? nobody has talked about the private security in the industry. Even you, they used to call us watchmen. 
they are happy calling us watch money because mm -hmm. those types of names. To, to soldier now. Yes, mm -hmm. Lord soldier is now a private security officer. Okay, we are now bringing him. I'm saying that the, 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 and the that's what he's saying. Mm -hmm. Let us not just look at the issue of um, the issue of uh, monetary. Mm -hmm. You know, in our collective bargaining agreement, we look at the terms and the conditions. And uh, I, I want to, to assist my brother. We have offered ourselves. I've also requested the Fazul that we need a week in Naivasha to look at the the document for the industry. But you know, a law cannot be enacted for a specific people, like the foreigners. So they comply with the law, and the OTNO is not complying. The law must cut across mm. whatever we agree. Now, I want to, re re to support what uh, somebody has talked about, the categorization of the industry. In fact, I made a proposal, 2012, mm. to Dr. Nyambari, who was then the Labor Commissioner. And I did what we call a categorization based on the assignment and the geographical areas of assignment and we are going back there you know so what what i want to request my brothers here including employers and whatever and the, the consumers let's have a discussion but you know what we are talking here is not what they are saying we are talking about an entry point salary in nairobi are you getting me? Mm. It's not about what they are saying, the minimum wage. You know, there's no... I mean, I've told you several times, my brother, mm. we don't have a minimum, minimum wage hospital. We don't have a minimum wage transport system in, the, in, in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. We don't have a minimum wage for market where cards go to for minimum wage. We go where Dr. William go to shop, you know? And uh, you, employers, you have been saving a lot of profits and you invest in lectures and... Uh, uh, and the Gorofas, you know? <laughs> so why okay. can't you share that profit with ourselves? <laughs> All right. Now, now as, as no. I finish, the problem in this industry, my brother, he began very well. People are used to a, a, a particular way of doing things. And uh, they're now fearing that the regulation, regulator will expose them, mm. you know? And, uh, you know, you can do mathematics. You can do mathematics. People, you, we, are, we are around 1 point something, 1.3 million. And those guys, a few of them, have been paying taxes. Mm -hmm. They have stolen from the government billions of money. Now with the presence of the regulations, now the government is going to save a lot of, a lot of money. You know, they, they don't have been a pay slip. They can agree with me. About the, out of uh, 2,500 employers, I can assure you, I'm on the ground. Less than 50 issues are an employee with the pay slip. That is corruption. So what the, the problem in this industry has mm. been lack of enf enforcement, number one. Mm -hmm. Then number two, corruption. Whereby the government speaks in a different vo voice that this is the basic. And you find they have given my brother here a contract lower than what the government is, is, is announcing. Mm. You know, through corruption means. Right. So what the regulator is doing mm -hmm. should be supported so that he enforces the law for the first time in the industry mm -hmm. and everything is going to go on smoothly. Right. What do they require from us? Mm -hmm is time frame. We have agreed. But we are not going to negotiate about the end point because look at the consumer, mm -hmm. the, the, the worker himself. Mamba transport from, from home to mm -hmm. duty, uniform, you know, and the medical, school mm -hmm. fees, and so, so forth. Therefore, the issue is entry point Nairobi is 30. All but right. the other All counties, right. because, yes. uh, but other the counties, counties, is counties, we are going to sit down and, and agree agreed. on the way forward. And maybe to finish yeah. on the same, same item, you know, you cannot be a broadcaster or a media personnel without undergoing a, a specific training yes. in a specific curriculum. Mm -hmm. You know, we need to have a private security repackaged, you know, from that watchman thing that I've been calling now. Mm -hmm. You know, like the, the, some of the employers are suffering that if, uh, 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 phobia of, of, of watchman, you know. When you give somebody a name, mm -hmm. the time is also their salary. Okay. So we are saying we need to have a professional uh, industry and the people should be trained in various categories. Like I was saying, for example, a card carding in a Nairobi hospital okay. must receive certain kind of uh, uh, education or training as opposed to when you start uh, commercial institutions. Yes. Now, okay. we cannot allow this tendency of uh, uh, commercial institutions mm -hmm. announcing billions of shillings profit and the guard who is standing at the gate is being paid 10,000 and we appreciate and we clap hands. We uh, by the way, I totally concur, but let me, let me post this to, to George because whatever he's saying quite resonates, but uh, that is not quite the, the real picture because you're telling private security firms as their union and also as the private uh, security firms regulatory authority to pay their guards in Nairobi 30,000 shillings, whereas guards at the judiciary, guards at um, NCPB silos, which are all government entities, are not being paid the same same amount that you're asking private companies to pay them. 
I, I think it's all about the budget. You need to have a budget. Even you as a company, you also need work within your budget. Mm. Because this is not a government enterprise. This is private enterprise. And when you enter this enterprise, you are getting in to trade. You are here for commercial reasons. You want to make money. Profits. And when you talk about profits, I need to package my services in such a way that I'll get something out of this. Mm -hmm. So basically when we are looking at this, that's why I've said it's very important for us to look at the ripple effects of this. What is, is it going to do to the whole industry per se? Mm -hmm. And Daktaria is talking about less than 50 companies pay, giving pay slips to their guards. Do you know why? It's a governmental failure. Why has the government failed to provide security? That gap that has been created by the government failure to provide adequate security has, is what has led to the mushrooming of these small, small companies. And these companies are there to fill that void mm. that has been created by the government. If the government was, if the security apparatus of the government were functioning and providing adequate security, mm -hmm. then we will not have need for these 2,500 companies. And it will be very easy for the private security regulatory authority to regulate the 50 yeah, that are compliant. Mm. But if right now you try to regulate these 2,500 and you say you are not operating without having been licensed by the authority, mm. then my friend, we are going to create a crisis. So basically, the start point should not be on salary. It should be progressive. How do you deal with issues of insecurity? Mm. How do we improve security services from the government apparatus? And then now we bring in the private players. Mm. So when you bring in the private players, we say this is the number that we want. Mm. Yeah? This number can be properly regulated. But as it is right now, every other person will wake up in the morning and start his own private security company. And when you start now insisting on saying, pay 30,000 in Nairobi, I live in apartments, whereby probably you're paying 50,000 shillings for as rent. Mm. And then my landlord will try and pass that cost to me. Yeah. I look at this cost and say, no, Buona landlord, I cannot afford this, so let me move out. Okay, mm. I move out, he has lost a tenant, and at the same time now, the security company, the landlord will say, no, I don't need your services anymore. Let me go electronic. Convince your people and say, I don't need a physical guard. Mm. Killer Mutu will have a gate to the key. I'll put CCTV, etc., etc. Okay. You get? Yes. So all, we, we need to look at all this holistically mm. and say now, which way forward? Mm. And as I've said, there are companies here that have categories of guards. They, have called the, they call them premium guards. I come to you and tell you, this is the package that I have. Premium will go for this rate. Mm. Normal will go for this rate. Standard, this rate. Decide. I want to go to Mombasa. I can use Jumbo Jet. I can use KQ. I can use Marsh. Or I can even go to these shuttles that are here under bus. All right. You get <laughs> yeah, it. Makes so, so, basically, yeah. so basically, that is how we need to look at this. And as I've said, uh -huh. I agree with uh, Chris. Let this be progressive. Mm. Let us re look at yeah. that document. Uh -huh. Because there are things in that document that cannot be implemented. It was a copy-paste mm. from somewhere, and we said, let's move with it. Okay. We want regulations. Mm. We want to be regulated. But let us regulate in such a way that it will not kill the industry. All right. As we wind up, Chris, I'm looking at um, what people say that to whom much is given, much is expected. In as much as we do their welfare, we pay them the 30,000 shillings. We do expect more from the other side. We have seen some of come kind of um, uh, the, the, the pull and push that is currently there in regards to paying them this amount of money. A lot is expected from the other side of the guards as well. Yeah, if, if you go back to the question you asked initially on training, and like we, we, we've all said one way or the other, mm -hmm. it would be very good, very good, extremely base, baseline of our, of, 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 of our discussion, that every person who comes in the private security industry must have a certain baseline train. Yes. Then from there, let's go to specialization areas. We want it to be a bank guard. Initially, we would give all bank guards something equivalent to a tear gas. We call it, we call it, uh, we call it a chemical mace. Mm. And we had to train you on the usage of that chemical mace before we deploy you. We had to do that. So we are saying that if you come to a bank, yes, right, we have this kind of a guard specialized for your area. If you go to a supermarket or a hospital, we say, we have a guard who's very good in hospitality, uh, in the healthcare sector, right? Mm. Security, the healthcare environment. But now this is what we are saying, mm -hmm. critically what we are saying. 
In the push of what we are seeing right now, you will find that the field of security has so many options. Very many options. Like my brother said, I would go for e-security and say I don't want static or, or, or the human intervention here. I want animal intervention and I want electronic intervention. What does that mean to the guard, itself, the guard himself? We are saying this guard will lose his job mm. and the benefit of the greater good that we are pursuing mm. as an industry, mm. we lose it along the way. Oh. So then how do we pull back ourselves and look at how do we implement all these things that we are straying right from training to all these other items without losing anyone in the industry? The first thing, we know that our regulator has the details of every security operator in this country. Mm -hmm. I would sit down and look at your contract and look at the budget cycle of your client. For example, the government is going to, to, to come up with the budget, the, the next budget in the next fiscal year from the month of July. How do I now come and help you to ensure that your contract reads in the right direction towards what I want as a regulator? Mm -hmm. I would even engage the government myself and make sure the government knows that because we've repacked our product, because we've trained our products, because we brought in this new equipment, and because we want to sustain mm. the, 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 the better uh, policy in the, in the economy, this is what we, what, 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 what we want to do, all right? Okay. So we are saying, the other thing is that we went a lot to broadcast punitive measures than to broadcast how do we sit together and propel or torpedo ourselves to the next level where we can all comfortably sit back and say, yes, gentlemen and ladies, we have achieved the industry requirement that we are now moving all, 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 right. all ahead. All right. Uh, ben, ben, that, just one, that, one, that, one, one point. Well, unfortunately, we, we have run out of time, but mm. I will give you 10 seconds to tell us how now as a private company are you doing to ensure that you conform to what uh, the, 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 the organization wants, that is the, the PRISC and also a call, the private security union. Thank you. One, I want to say that um, our regulator is doing a good job. Mm -hmm. no, one is, is, no one is licensed okay. without meeting the threshold. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Dr. Isaac, All right. in the industry, we don't have 2,500 licensed mm -hmm. uh, farms. Mm -hmm. We have much less than that. Maybe that is the registered companies, mm -hmm. but the ones that have been licensed by mm -hmm. PSLA, they are far much less than that. And so, the, we, we must have met the minimum uh, the restaurant, including mm. uh, the government statutory deductions mm. for you to be to be licensed. Then, okay. uh, training, uh, yes, finally, yes. Finally, finally, because finally, you know, finally, uh, finally, we sh we do remuneration be uh, because of the risk levels, and uh, we do the training according to the manuals currently given by the PSRA. Okay. Yeah. Dear Gongogi Wilson, who is the Managing Director for County Guards Limited, uh, one of the private security firms that have been instructed to, to follow the regulation. All of the security firms in the country have to follow regulations. Just next to him, we have Dr. Isaac Andabwa, who is the Secretary General or the National General Secretary for the Kenya National Private Security Workers Union. Just next to him, we have security expert, analyst, and also trainer, George Musamali. And also just next to him, another security consultant and also expert, Chris Otieno. We are looking at the private security guards and especially on their welfare. Thank you so much for joining us on this first hour. On the second hour, I have engineer Chris Paswadimba, who already is in the house. We are putting things into perspective when it comes to the state of the nation. Back in a moment.